to the third video segment on EventGen. This time we're going to take this destination IP and the source IP and we're going to su supply some IP addresses to it. And let's go look at my little thing here. We can do random IP4s, IPv6s. There are some cool little things you can do here. I think I'll do a video segment on it. Um, there are some limitations. You've got to be careful with it. Um, it IPv4 is probably not too bad if you want to use an internal addressing scheme, but the minute you want to go having destination IPs as an external random IPv4 might be a little bit too big. Anyway, but that's out, outside the scope of this video here. For now, we're just going to keep it very controlled. And so we're going to use a file to replace the file in. This is really cool because you can use it for anything. I'm going to do it for source and destination IP, but you could do it for a query. You could do it for, say, uh, maybe you have a video checkout system or a thing that was being bought, or you got logs that's simulating something, a product being bought. They could choose from a list of products or things like that. So when you create your logs, this gives you a lot of different options. You just have a little file that is basically a source of truth for all fields that can fill in this. Uh, this log. So in our case, the basic principle in the previous video I mentioned this second number, this is the number of token. So we have a token zero, which is their timestamp. The next token, and it really is important, I have seen it, I I'm sure some people made it work. Typically I I read the log left to right. The first thing you're gonna replace is token zero. I and my timestamp in my log is the very first field. Um, don't do token zero as your source, then switch back and forth. Just replace your tokens from left to right. What do I mean by that? Well, let's show it here. If I go in here, close this, and I cat Don't do token one, token zero here, then make this token one and this token two, or make this token zero, token one, token two. Keep it left to right. So this is token one, token two, sorry, token zero, token one, token two. I'm sure somebody's managed to make it work. For me, I found this event gen is got is touchy enough that don't 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 put you're playing with fire if you change up your order so anyway i've got my token zero is the timestamp so it matches there my next one is source and in this case my example does not match because i'm actually source ip so i need to change that to source ip still looking for the digit and that's going to be the zero so it's going to just basically replace the zero what's the replacement type file and what do you use? You, you give it the path. And so in this case, you actually put in Splunk Home, Etsy Apps, and this is not my app. My app is actually called L-E-U-W -E App. And then Samples Source IP. And so whatever the name of your app is goes there, and then it goes in the Samples directory, and then it, it, it assumes that I have a Source IP text file. So let's go make one. So if I come down here, I got my mylog. Let's go and make a source ip.txt. And make sure you put your stuff in quotes. So I'm just going to go 10.0.1, 10.0.0.2, 10.0.3, Ten dot zero dot zero dot four, and so you're just going to place in some IP addresses you might want to have as your source address. Put each one on its own line and make sure it's in quotes. It needs to be a string, otherwise it will cause problems. Basically, what's going to happen is it's going to insert into JSON, and JSON is going to need to know that it's a string. So if it goes in without the quotes, it's going to try to put this in, and then the JSON string will break. You're basically replacing your JSON, that zero, with this. So it needs the double quotes. And if that wasn't clear enough, let's go show this again. If I go cat my log, it's going to replace zero with what you put in there. And if you put a string there, it's going to break. Strings have to be between double quotes. And so that's why I put my my answers, my little, my log files in double quotes. If I was just putting a number there and I wanted my IP, IPs can't don't exist have to have dots in them. But the minute the dots go there, they become strings. Um, but if I was making a 
if I was doing bytes in or bytes out, I could just leave numbers there, just a bunch of different random numbers, and it would be just totally fine. But the minute it becomes a string, you need to put it in double quotes, otherwise the JSON's not valid. And what will happen is non-valid JSON will never get ingested, and then you'll, try to, you'll spend countless hours trying to figure out, why does my event gen not work? And that's actually the reason. So that's why we have double quotes there. I now have my source IP dot text. And while we're at it, let's go make a dest IP by dest IP dot text. And here we're going to go 8.8.8.8. We're going to make it go to 1.2.3.4 and 10.5.5.1 and 10. Okay. So there are my destination IPs. I'll eventually get here. Come on. There we go. WQ, save it. And now we have both a source and a destination IP. So let's just put them both in there while we're at it. So I'm just going to copy this, copy, paste. And now I need to replace token one with token two, token two. So here's token zero, token one, token two. But it's now no longer dest IP, source IP, it's dest IP. It's looking for that zero file. And instead of looking for source IP as a destination, we're going to go dest IP dot text. So we've got everything set. Let's validate that. If I go look in my samples directory, I have my log sample. I have my source ip.txt. I've got my dest ip.txt. They're both in there. And so let's go put these stanzas in my event gen. So we got the token zero, but now we need to get the uh, other ones in there. So I should just be able to copy and paste this in. Unfortunately, these are commented out. I just realized that, so I better make sure to fix that as well with these. Uh, Pound signs in front, we're going to, come on, I can hit delete. I know I can. There we go. That should work. Quickly check to make sure I put no spelling errors in there. My tokens are in order. My app, my app name matches, matches. All right. If I do this, if this worked right, I can. And now I'll just restart Splunk. All right, we're back. I actually still don't know what exactly happened. I copied in my text files again. My text files look just fine. I changed the IPs. Um, CD samples, that, shouldn't have made, that wouldn't have made any difference. But if I buy my source IPs, they look just like that. Colon, carriage return, colon, carriage return, colon, carriage return. And so there, those are following those IP addresses just fine. And then I have a different set of IPs. I could have used those. Originally, I put a bunch of externals, but I've just put them in a different subnet range here. And then they show up just fine. I don't know what happened. I must have missed a quote or something there. When I copied my stuff over, it's it's fine. There's nothing that I saw. If you guys saw it when, you, when I was, and I can relook at it when I was recording. Uh, what might have happened, and if I do, I'll make a comment below. But this principle got my source IP, got my des destination IP just like I wanted. All right, so that's it. That's working. Next video, we'll put a, mo a few more sources in there, a few more, a uh, few more event gen. Uh, sample files, things like that, and we should be good to go. Uh, I'm hoping that you're starting to see how this can all come together to build yourself your own uh, demo lab or whatever to uh, help with training and stuff like that. Anyway, I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. These videos are useful. I hope you keep coming back to these videos and check out my other videos on this, on this channel. Uh, ho hope to see you keep coming back.